In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this tiled background using just one shape layer and the repeater. We'll add some expression controls, which will allow you to change the layout of this background in seconds, giving vastly different looks. If you're a fan of shape layers, the repeater, and expressions, then you'll get a lot out of this tutorial. I want to thank those of you who have supported my channel and my family by ordering my text and emission template. You can also support this channel by signing up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, getting your 7-Minute AE merch from our online store, joining this channel, or donating to my Patreon or PayPal me. Links are all in the description below. Your support goes a very long way and helps me to continue creating content to make your life easier as a motion graphic designer. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Right click in the area that's to the left of our timeline and choose new shape layer. Now, if you're using a MacBook or a laptop and you can't right click, you can also go up to layer, new shape layer and add one in that way. So open this up and I'm gonna add in a group and I'm gonna call this group A. And inside of that group, I'm gonna add in another group and I'm gonna call this R-E-C-T for rectangle. The reason why I'm going to do that is because if we add in a rectangle and open up the rectangle path, we can see there are no options for rotation. And I do want to rotate this rectangle or at least have the option of doing that. If this were not inside of a group, we would not have that option. Since we put that inside of a group, if you open up the group's transform properties, you can see we do have that option. And in order to see this better, let's go ahead and add in a fill and a stroke. So see, now we have this option down here for rotation. I can make that 45 degrees, and now we have a diamond. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the color of this real quick. And we need this diamond now to be in the top left. P for position, and just zero out your position values so we're in the top left corner right there. Okay, now let's open this back up, and we wanna add in a repeater. Now it matters where you add in repeaters and other animation tools. So with content selected, Select add, and we're gonna add in a repeater. We have three copies that go over to the right. I'm just gonna zoom in on this so that way you can see this better. If we were to put the repeater inside of a rectangle group, you'll see we get a different configuration. That's not what we want. So make sure the repeater is outside of this rectangle group here. We're gonna open up our repeater. We default to three copies. I wanna make sure this gets all the way across our comp here. So I'm gonna maybe make this 20 copies. We have this position of 100 on the X and Y on the zero. Now, if you start to move this X position, you'll see this is moving you horizontally and Y is moving you vertically. So for this, we wanna move horizontally. If you look at our rectangle path size settings, we are at 100 pixels by 100 pixels, which is a default. So we need to move these squares 150 pixels apart. So that way the edges touch. So whatever this value is here, say if this was 200, then this value would need to be 300 because we're doing one and a half times. So if it was like 50, this would be 75, like that. So I'm just gonna change this back to 100, 150, and that's an important distinction to make because this will come back later. Whatever the rectangle path size setting is, you need this position on the X to be one and a half times its width. And I'm gonna rename repeater one to X for right now, and then I'm going to duplicate that, and we're gonna rename this to Y because we'll be affecting the Y position now. So now we just want to reverse these values. We have 150 on X, zero on Y. So let's make zero X, 150 on Y. And now we have our tiled background. Okay, so at this point, I wanna add in some expression controls just to make life a little bit easier. And we will be saving this as an animation preset and this will help you out in the long run. In your effects and presets panel, let's just type in slider for slider control. Double click that. And now we can rename this to shape size. And that's going to be controlled by our rectangle path size. So right now we know it's set to 100. Let's go ahead and set our slider to 100 and then just pick whip this over. So now if we change this value, all of our squares will follow suit. But notice that we don't have it edge to edge now. It doesn't automatically update. So let's write an expression that will do that. So open up our X group here, open up the transform properties for X, and you'll know you're in the right place because we have 150 zero. So option click onto position. We're going to type value comma open bracket, and for now, just put zero comma zero. If we select this first zero, this is our X value here, and take your expression pick whip, which is right here, go up to shape size, and then at the end of that, type times 1.5, because remember, we need to separate them by one and a half times the size of our shape. And if we update our shape size, we can see that horizontally, they are staying linked. Vertically, they're not, so all we have to do is add an expression to our Y group, 
So let's open that up, go to the position of our Y group here, option alt click onto position, value comma open bracket zero comma zero. And now we're gonna use our second zero, because remember it's this Y value that we'll be affecting. Expression pick whip up to shape size times 1.5. So now we can take our shape size slider and whatever we change that to, now all of these squares are gonna stay linked and you can make this any size you want and it will always be true. So now I want to make an expression also for our copies, because notice if we go down to size 50, we're starting to lose some of our copies on the right. And this is a 1920 by 1080 comp. So we need to set a value so that whenever we fill our copies horizontally, they will also fill vertically. But we want to do that with one value. So let's duplicate this shape size. I'm gonna rename this to copies. Go to your finder and just type in copies and they'll be revealed here. So we wanna take our copies of our X, go to the slider control and that's set to 50. So you can see as we update this, that is controlling our copies. But now we want our Y to be controlled as well. So pick whip our copies for the Y group up to copies. Multiply this by nine divided by 16 because we're in a 16 by nine comp. So now let's say we make this 15 copies for X. We can see that we still retain that size like that. Okay, and then I wanna do one more slider control for now. So we're gonna duplicate this copies and we're gonna call this stroke width. Go back up to our finder and just type in stroke and we get our stroke width right here. I'm gonna pick whip that over to our stroke width. It jumped up because this was preset to 50, but I'm gonna put this back down to five. Okay, so now if we toggle our transparency off and on, we know that there's transparency behind here. We want this to be a background, so we need to fill that in. So we're gonna take our group A, duplicate that, call this group B, and I'm gonna leave it on top for now because I can change my fill color and you can see it will update. So we can distinguish between A and B just by toggling off this B right here. And so now I wanna move my B diamonds into the spaces that will fill in this tiled background open the transform properties for the entire B group. Take our pick whip for position, which as right now is set to zero, zero. Go up to our shape size, open that up, and we're gonna multiply this by 0.75, and that will fill in all the holes. And the reason why we're doing 0.75 is because we need our diamonds to be one and a half times apart from one another in order to create this tiled illusion. So in order to move our B group down and over so it fills in these holes, instead of multiplying it by 1.5, we're gonna do half of that, which is 0.75. Now, if some of this math is confusing, you don't necessarily need to worry about it unless you're really interested in this kind of thing. Just know that if you follow the math that I'm putting out there, you will get the result that you're looking for. Let's go ahead and start to add in some other controls that will give us complete control over everything that we're doing. So let's go to our effects and presets and you can type in color control. I'm gonna double click that. We're gonna need a few copies of this. So we're gonna go fill A, duplicate that, fill B, stroke A, duplicate that, and stroke B. Type in color, everything that has a color will show up. So now we see we have our B stroke and fill and our A stroke and fill. And what I like to do at this point, because I don't want to have to remember what these colors are, once I link them up, they will all turn to red. So I'm just gonna click on this purple. If you just copy, it will automatically copy your hex code. Bring it down to fill B, and as you can see, it turned red. Paste to get our purple back. Same thing for blue, I'm gonna copy that color. Go down to fill A, and then make that our blue. We do our strokes. Those are easy enough to fix though because they're both white. So if we change this to white, now we have everything set the way we need it. So now we can control this from our effects controls panel. Select this stroke width, duplicate it. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom and let's call this roundness A. Duplicate that and call this roundness B. And I wanna give us a roundness option because we can actually change the way this shape looks. Go to your finder and type in roundness roundness A, link that up to roundness A, and then a roundness B to roundness B. You can increase your roundness and get either rounded edges, or if you go up high enough, you can actually make this into a circle. So you just get a lot of different looks, which is really, really cool. We can actually make even further changes. So let's duplicate this roundness B. I'm gonna call this rotation A, duplicate that, and we're gonna have rotation B. Because remember, we affected the rotation of these groups in order to get this diamond. So now if you type in rotation, you'll get a lot of different rotations. So that may not be the best way to find it. So in our B group, we want to go into the rectangle group here. So let's open that up. Under those transform properties, we have changed our rotation to 45. 
change the rotation on both of these to 45 so that way we don't see any change whenever we link them up so this is our b group so we'll go there and then go under our a group under rectangle transform rotation right here is 45 you can link that to our a group i can change this value to zero and you see we get a completely different look if i increase my roundness to zero now we have diamonds and ellipses i can also change this other one to zero and now we have just a totally different kind of pattern you can make this any value you want, maybe 25, get a totally different kind of look. So you can do all kinds of cool things with this. You can change the amount of roundness. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to what we had it before. Okay, so now we need to animate this. So let's open up our B group, rectangle path, scale. Under the rectangle path size settings, we have an expression there, so we can't animate that. But see if we animate this scale, or if we animate this scale, we get the look we want. Make sure you're at the beginning of your animation and put a keyframe for scale. Make that zero. Shift page down one, two times. Make that 100. F9 to make that easy ease. Go into your graph editor and just pull that handle all the way to the left. So we have this kind of animation. Now, if you just select scale, copy, and go down to our A group under our rectangle group, you just select scale and paste. Now, if we hit U, we can pull up our keyframes and just offset these a little bit. One of the issues, though, is say, what if I make one of these a circle? We can see that we have some see-through behind this. Like if you toggle this off and on, we have some transparency. So what I like to do is just add in one final touch here. Select contents, go to add group. We're going to move this down to the very bottom. We're going to call this background color. We open that up, add in a rectangle and a fill. Now I'm going to turn everything else off so that way you can see what I'm doing here. If you notice it's up here in our top left corner because we moved our entire position up there. So we just need to offset some of these values. First, let's make a rectangle path size, the size of our comp, which is 1920 by 1080. And it's still centered up here in the top left. So we're gonna take our position and we wanna move this 960 by 540 because that's the midpoint for a 1920 by 1080 comp. So for your background color, just make the size of your rectangle path, the size of your comp, and make the position the midpoint of 1920 by 1080. Or if you're doing something like a one by one, it would be whatever the midpoint of that is. You can take one of these other color controls and just duplicate it, bring it down to the bottom, rename it background color. Now you can open up your fill for the background color and just connect it like that. And now we're gonna need to animate this on. So easy way to do that is just open up your transform properties of the background color. Actually, maybe make this background, not BF, and put a keyframe for opacity, set it to zero, then just a simple fade in over 20 frames. And I'm just gonna select both of those, make both of those easy ease, turn on all these again. And now if you'll watch this play back, we kind of have it where it fades in. You can change this color if you want something that looks kind of cool in the background, so it's not just white. Well, let's say just take this rotation B and we'll duplicate that. And I'm gonna call this background opacity and we can open up our fill settings right here under the opacity settings, because remember, we're fading this in, so we can't use this opacity. So we wanna pick whip this over to our opacity. So if we increase that all the way and then shut off these other layers, we can see that that comes in full opacity, but you can also set this down to zero and it won't come in at all. And that may come in handy if all of these are diamonds, like if they fit perfectly together and you don't want there to be any space in between there, you may want to turn that background off because now if you turn that on, you can see that it's going to kind of seep through there. Okay, now let's just save this as an animation preset. So we want to open this layer up and select Contents, Effects, and Transform. Now the way I've shown you historically how to do this is to go up to your animation, save animation preset. There's another way you can do that though. If you go to your effects and presets with all of these selected, you'll see a little icon at the bottom right that says create new animation preset. So just a cool little shortcut if you didn't know about it. So we can select that and you wanna to go to documents, Adobe, the version you're using, user presets. And now you can put it anywhere in here. I have folders, so I'm gonna drop this into my seven minute AE folder. So I'll say tiled background and I'm just gonna hit save. If I get rid of that shape layer and I'm gonna clear out my effects and presets, I can start to type tiled underscore background, which is what we named it. And we see it's right here. We have keyframes on this animation. So After Effects will drop the keyframes wherever your playhead is. Say I have my playhead at the one second mark and I double click this, hit U. See our keyframes are here at the one second mark. So what I always like to do is go back to the beginning of the layer and then double click U. We see our keyframes are right here. 
I can change the roundness of all of these layers. I can change the colors of these. If I want to have a background in there or not, I can make that choice. I can do all kinds of really, really cool things with this. And it's all done with the click of a button. All of that kind of complicated math that we went through, you don't really have to worry about that anymore because we now have an animation preset that you can use in any number of projects and bring it in with just the click of a button. I want to thank Envato Elements for sponsoring this episode and also thank my viewers for making this sponsorship possible. For designers, editors, and animators, Envato Elements is an amazing resource. With your membership, you can download unlimited assets for anything you could possibly want or need for your projects. Get access to high-res stock videos and photos, as well as motion graphic templates for titles, video displays, logo animations, lower thirds, infographics, promos, openers, and so much more. You also get access to backgrounds, textures, patterns and icons, which we all know are vital resources. You get access to music for your sound beds in virtually any style or genre you can possibly imagine for designing the perfect sound for your projects. Speaking of sound design, you have access to Envato Elements entire sound effects database, which includes any sound you could possibly need or want for anything from short film production to commercials to logo stingers. Every asset comes with commercial and non-commercial licensing at no extra cost, so both you and your clients can produce amazing projects with peace of mind. And again, with your membership, you get unlimited downloads of all of these assets from Envato Elements. Download as much as you want, as often as you want, without ever having to pay for individual projects or files. Check out Envato Elements from the link in the description below and get 70% off the first month. That means you have access to everything from Envato Elements for less than $10. It's an unbelievable deal and I highly recommend you check it out. I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful. Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-Minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>